Okay. All right. Okay. Here, mm. Let's try this. Go. You, you go. Welcome to Book Club for Movies. Ooh. Welcome to Book Club for Movies. It's me, Ryan. Hey. It's <laughs> we're doing it. It's it's we're back. It's the week of no, the <laughs> December. There we go. The, the b- Thanksgiving, say. and here it is coming at you. It's the week Ryan. of November twenty third. I mean, it's Matt. He's better get the alpacas. Did you do me yet? I can't remember. I well, I said it's Ryan, but I don't know what you do. I don't know how to do this. Nobody knows what I that thing you do is what I do because movies. <laughs> <laughs> you have the of course you have that ready to go at any moment. You're you're a good person. You. I am Ryan Miller. He is Matt Amberg. Doing that thing you. And this do. is book club for movies where we do watch one movie a week and then we talk about it. And lately, it's been. A whole bunch of wieners for this here November ween, uh, which is kind of like Halloween, except October ween, and then a month later. Still doesn't explain anything. Uh, uh, you know what? I think you have knocked that right out of the park. And we have so far in the bag, if you want to go back and, and check the list so far, it's Creep Show last week. Before that, it was Haunt. Uh, this week, boy... It's called Color Out of Space. I'm assuming you can synopsize it. I like how I'm just increasingly doubtful, it seems, (laughs) especially during this season. But I know you can do it. Sure, I can try it. Here we go. The book club for movies version. We'll do it. We'll go with it. It's the Color Out of Space. It's going to come at you an hour and 50 minutes. Written by Scarlett Amorous and Richard Stanley. Directed by Richard Stanley. Starring Nicolas Cage, Jolie Richardson, Madeline Arthur, Brendan Meyer, Julian Hibbert, Elliot Knight, and Tommy Chong. Here's your book club for movies synopsis for The Color Out of Space. After a glowing meteorite crash lands in Nathan Gardner's farm, he and his family are forced to reckon with something impossible to comprehend. A color out of space. All right. I I appreciate the title again in any form of synopsis or movie when the title is mentioned yep it's good yeah it's it makes that movie better than it should be like double dragon the movie could have been better if they were like we're double dragon and they said it like 50 times do they say i've again you found another hole in my uh i do believe they actually say it's the double dragon but it, but it's yeah it's hmm. really stupid so it's got dacascos in it and they say the title of the film in the movie yeah and the guy from party of five who like somehow is supposed to be wow. believable as a martial arts expert. And then also, Hey, what's up, Alyssa Milano? How you doing? This might be my most egregious exception so far. Honestly, it's worth watching mostly just to see the crazy weird makeup they did for a Bobo because <laughs> a Bobo. I love the name. They I didn't, love it. they didn't just, they were like, you know what? We can't just hire a gigantic dude. That's like humongously built, you know, like the dude who plays the mountain in game of Thrones Just Google that guy. He's you friggin' ginormous. I would they were so. like, no, no, no. This is from a video game. So we better put makeup on somebody. And it is, the best so it's not even like tom hardy bane oh no 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 this is okay this is this is super shredder levels of of makeup but a bobo doesn't have like a bobo has a face so it's not shredder it's cool and if you're new to the show uh you are completely up to speed at this point (laughs) we are going to be talking about the color out of space that was just our uh double dragon diatribe just a teaser yeah (laughs) just a little bit of a what happens around here uh I was going to say, I think we've hit the high water mark for synopsis that cannot explain the movie. Uh, Not easily. (laughs) Of no fault of your own. Uh, It's a nice little film you got here, Matt. I was unaware of the fact that it was also not even the first... I, okay, it's definitely a first of its kind, but not the first to be based on this particular Lovecraft story, I guess. Correct. Do you yourself have any experience with Die Monster Die, Absolutely. the 1965 classic with Boris Karloff? Absolutely, I've seen. Yeah, that that was. I didn't realize even in, when I saw this, you know, years uh, last year, I had no idea. I never connected Die Monster Die okay. to this. Like, well, they, just, they, they don't put the title of the book in the movie. In the movie, I so. also haven't seen it a thousand times. So oh, uh, I, I've seen Die Monster Die, but not a thousand times. So it's, have you it's, seen Color Out of Space? a fair amount of times like four 
It only came out last... Uh, wait, this year? It came out in 2018, but I what? think it was actually Gosh. released in theaters. Like, it finally got... Like, it, it was finished in 2018 and then released in 2019. Every time. I need to stop trying to tell the difference between 2018, 19, or 20 at this point. It's it's a lost cause. It doesn't do anybody any good because it's just when you find out the answer, you're like, oh, what? Yeah. And you're then you angry. go, why isn't Mark Dacascos in it? <laughs> okay. Okay. If I'm going to put the brakes on that, where that's going oh. just right now. Uh, do you then also have any experience with the 1987 adaptation of The Color Out of Space? It also doesn't use that title. It's called The Curse and stars Will Wheaton. Uh, I am familiar with that movie. I don't know. Two for two. Uh, I could not, couldn't tell you much about it, but it's another okay. one that I, I know because I, he was Will Wheaton. He was in a bunch of crap. Wait, you know it because of Will Wheaton yeah. and not because of Lovecraft? That was, well, it was, so I was probably seven when I saw it, which it, like to me, That's true, that wasn't a, okay, gotcha. it wasn't a Lovecraft thing for me. It was more of a, hey, I know that kid, you know, and I recognize it that It was movie. more of a, a love Will Wheaton for you. Well, it was, <laughs> hey, I like that guy and stand by me. And then, you know, he sucks in the next Shoot. generation, then grew up Forgot and he was in crappy. Stand by me. Right. And I don't like him anymore. He sucks. Uh, okay. So. Uh, Color from the Dark, 2008. Mm -mm. Don't okay. know that one. It doesn't also star anybody that I can add there that you might know. Uh, what about, there's a German one. You're, you're German. I, <laughs> there is some Germanic <laughs> humanity within me. I, I have not seen a German version of this. Either. Die Farbe? Uh, the Color? I don't color? know if I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> yeah, wow, you do right. See, I knew it. Yes, The Color, 2010. I can only assume is harrowing. It's German. Sounds awful. So uh, I mean, awful and like it could be. It's horrifying and scares me. Yes, yes. No, it's probably a very good movie. <laughs> even even that even Ger saying I love you in German is terrifying. Let alone. <laughs> <laughs> now we're bordering on Germans who say nice things. The skit from that's it's true. Uh, the Dana Carvey show. The internet. Kind of? Starring, oh, now the, yes, from the internet ah. now, but I, th I believe Steve Carell. In fact, I think they did a revival. It was Steve Carell. Oh, Steve Carell and Steve and Colbert, I think. That We're both on. sounds okay. viable. Look it up. It's funny. So, brings us to our gem of the week here, our 2018 through 2020 version of this, the Color Out of Space, the H.P. Lovecraft story from 1920, whatever, of course. Which is, in fact, since it is 2019-ish and is weird, mm -hmm. was, yes, produced by, let's say it together, Spectra Elijah Vision. Wood. Oh. Well, <laughs> we Elijah, thing, uh, yes, Elijah no, Wood right. does own or is part owner. He's related to somehow Spectra Vision. Which so. did, thank you very much, also produce Mandy. Yes, they did. All right. That's, uh, I know it's... I'm just falling for it because I hate... When it's, they're like from the people that brought you, like I'm okay if that's like maybe the actor, which is this is backwards, going to be by the end, or the director or something like that. But I feel like when they say from the producers of, I'm like, okay, that's we're getting a little. Yeah, you start going like, who, what, wait, who the hell is this producer? I've never heard of this person. But actually, this might be a certain exception because you know when it's coming from Elijah Wood or Yes Spectre Vision. Yes. It's going to get wild. They, they've done. Uh, they've done a number of movies. Uh, that I have loved uh, over the past few years since about 20 something uh, 14, 13 I don't know when movies come out they have a track record uh, yeah a huge one for me uh, I, I'm I'm a big Elijah Wood believer I believe in him I think he's a real person oh no I, I think he's been in movies <laughs> uh, I, but I, I want to talk to the deniers but I, I yeah, we should I, have equal representation on this that's show. right you get you, there's there's three levels of people you got flat earthers elijah wood deniers and then anti-vaxxers <laughs> elijah wood deniers are a solid number two there i think well the number one i would rather have on the show than either of those other ones but sure well sure that's i mean because okay. they always prove themselves wrong which is the best part so do you want to shout out any others oh they're they're uh yeah i mean they, if we're going to talk SpectreVision, go out immediately and watch cooties if you want something kind of fun it's got uh know. elijah wood and rain wilson uh and it's total uh, uh zombie children uh a school that they're teachers at a school and all the kids get oh, infected now that makes sense terrific <laughs> uh 
maybe my favorite movie, or I shouldn't say that. The best movie I think that they've done that they've produced is called A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night by Anna Lily right. Armour. Unreal. Right. That movie is just out out outstanding. They also did one of my favorites, The Greasy Strangler, which I will never ever forget because number one, I love the movie. Number two, it's hilarious. And number three, we saw it on our anniversary in a theater with nobody else. <laughs> uh, they did Mandy. Daniel isn't real as well. Uh, and then they've got some other flicks coming out. So, And you would recommend each and every one of those? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Daniel right. isn't real is actually super interesting just to see Arnold Schwarzenegger's kid. That's really That's the one. Yeah, I remember I remember you talking about all of these on on rest of the show I stuff. Have... In fact, I want to say you did the girl twice minimum. A yeah, girl walks home alone times, at yeah. night. I've definitely talked about multiple times. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. So where does color out of space come in, maybe on, on the ranking there? Is this mid tier, top tier, SpectreVision? I, I mean, all of these are top tier. There's oh, the, okay. SpectreVision <laughs> has they have not had any like lulls for me, and this is no exception. Okay. I love <laughs> I, I I mean you know you're gonna get, you're gonna get uh, uh, I think this is the movie out of all of them maybe Daniel isn't real is probably the the quote unquote bottom of of like that list but that's not it's not saying anything <laughs> okay. poorly about that this would be the movie like next up on it and only maybe only because there are a few bits in here where it's like <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> For any of you that are familiar with that laugh, you know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's there are moments here where where like this movie has has everything in the world going for it and then it's like richard stanley who who has not directed anything after a horrific situation he was uh go look up his history he got booted off of island of dr moreau and he had he hated every every second of yeah they in fact there's a it's one of those movies that had a movie made about how wrong everything went yeah and if you're familiar with the island of dr moreau fabulous riff tracks uh, he is not to blame. He got nope. fired weeks into production at the most. And it, I, I dug into it because I, I, there are people out there saying that he has made nothing since. It's not exactly true. He's made a bunch, but he hasn't made any features. Definitely nothing big. But a bunch of shorts and, and other yes. little things here and there. But I think most impressive is that it wasn't that he got tapped which I could still see anybody from SpectreVision being like, what about the guy that got fired from Dr. Moreau? Well, uh, every one of them would say, to be fair, every one of them would go, what about that dude who directed Hardware? Yes, yeah. So That's yeah, really, least, yeah. Obviously, he, he didn't come onto the scene with Hardware, or with uh, Moreau. That was the thing that Hollywood finally tapped him for, and he was not made for. No. Uh, happily enough, to his credit, I would say. even, But he basically spearheaded color out of space this thing. yeah it wasn't that he was att uh, attached to it at some point or whatever like he this was his uh <laughs> i keep wanting them to say he birthed it but i, I love it do it why am i steering away from imagery as such i don't know stay tuned but yes this was his thing and does a great job yeah i i uh th this is a he, he he's coming in swinging here too he came in with an intention uh, and the intention wasn't just to do this movie. He actually has a trilogy, a, a, right. a Lovecraft trilogy set up. The next movie he wants to do is the Dunwich Horror and the original, the, the one from like the mid, uh, early 80s, late 70s. Wow, I can't wait to see. After seeing this, sure, I can't yeah, wait to yeah. see what he's going to do because holy crap, it's it's going to be delightful. And they do mention Dunwich and all this stuff because the movie does take place in Lovecraft's universe. So Color Out of Space does pay, take place uh, just kind of outside of Arkham. Right. Uh, Massachusetts, which is where you'd the location of Arkham is. Uh, Dunwich is, is out there as well. And there's a couple of other, uh, things that they mention that are fun. Little. And there's about, yeah, there's about like five zillion little Easter eggs in this thing. Like every word that's spoken, uh, go through the trivia section of IMDb as always a recommendation. In fact, there actually, might be a returning segment at the end of the show. Today. I hope so. Cause I haven't done that actually. And I'm yeah, sure there there's are thousands of things I've missed a ton yeah. in that movie. Yeah. References. So, which comes from, uh, Stanley's reverence for the material like he very much uh loves love lovecraft he was read to it or sorry it was read to him when he was a child and then when his mother later lay on the deathbed he read it to her sure uh, color out of space being one of those things so 
you know you're going to get a fair treatment of sorts of this material. Sure. Yeah. Which is cool. I actually, I didn't know that. So that's, that's, yeah. that's, uh, that does help with the reverence. What, what I was going to, to, to kind of what I was giggling about those, there are, are moments in this movie where it's, it's like that time away that, that he, he kind of maybe took a break while they were filming. He was just like, yeah, you guys got this. I got to go to the craft service table real quick. And, and there are a few moments where, where the direction certainly, I don't think, and maybe it was the best take. Maybe it's the editing. There was not, there are a couple moments where the acting is just for what's going on, even knowing what's going hmm. on. I kind of have to go. I feel like there should be a different reaction here. Somewhat. <laughs> is any of that coming from Nicolas Cage? I wonder. Uh, not particularly actually oh, interesting. because, okay. because so, and, and, and I'll give, I'll give the, the viewers this bit for, for what I'm talking about. We'll get to the, the bit I'm specifically, do we want to start the story? Like where does this take place in the story? It's, Do we want it's, an intro? it's literally uh, the last like 15 oh. <laughs> minutes of the movie. There's, okay. there's a seek, there's a specific bit that, that, that kind of just, some of it hits for me, some of it doesn't, and the parts okay. that don't kind of make me always kind of uh, like a little twitchy. So, so for the uninitiated, we're going to spoil this movie like we spoil every movie, and in many different ways. Not just that we're going to tell you what happens in the thing. We'll spoil it. Like I will talk too much about. It. I will look into things too deeply that will spoil it in that way for you. And and just by the end, you're you're going to be sick of it. But I would still say we couldn't possibly spoil the movie or maybe any surprises of it and in fact maybe i don't know would you say the more you know the better i mean <laughs> going I, I, into I, this, this is movie? a this is a movie where i mean personally i i was super happy to go into it not really remembering the story and how it went okay. how how it kind of it starts builds and then deteriorates onto itself in, in a purposeful way, not deteriorates in a like, Oh my gosh, Richard Stanley built this movie up and then it crumbles to the ground at the end. No, 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 not at all. More of the people but, but, or organic material yeah, well, you know, crumbles or folds and folds in on its, but, but, but <laughs> even knowing what this story entails without seeing a lot of it, it just is not, necessarily gonna be a spoiler <laughs> you know like and like I, I th and i want to actually get into the uh, the meat gosh what is wrong with my word choice is after hopefully it's viewing this movie only an hour ago i don't know hopefully uh it, it tastes fine and it's not there uh, i i want to dig into that exact thing because i think it comes from the source material but before we get too parenthetical here you were going towards a uh, acting choice. It sounded like, or direction. I, it's there's there's, there's a moment towards the end. Uh, we we get towards uh, the climax of the film. It's the third act. It's it's kind of a, a, a little bit into it um, that I I just don't think there's a, a, a I I'm curious what the direction was and why that those takes were chosen. Okay, it sounds like something. I think we're talking too much. Yeah, let, about let's, talking let's about get to it. The, Is it something that w builds on what comes before? So we should kind of wait to talk there, about. Yes, it? Oh, okay, yes, yes, right, yes. Okay, okay. Let, sorry, my fault. No, yeah, yeah. No, it is. Uh, <laughs> the, bl the blame is squarely on your shoulders. <laughs> I never said otherwise. So, Color Out of Space begins with a family on a farm. The dad is Nicolas Cage. Uh, that's a pretty good synopsis too, right there. I honestly would just end it there. Watch the movie. <laughs> Jolie Richardson, uh, she's always delightful. Uh, she is. In fact, you know what her claim to fame isn't, but is in my brain? Nip tuck. Uh, no, Event Horizon, sir. Oh, sure. <laughs> that movie that's actually supposed to be becoming a TV show. Oh, of course. On a Everything Amazon. Is, right? and, uh, no, uh, with the guy, they, uh, Amazon's doing it, I guess. You know, hell in space. Why not? Whatever. Has that ever, oh, this is another, this is maybe a TVVB. Has that ever paid off? I mean, they've got TV shows for, for Jack Ryan, for Hannah, the movie I, I love. I mean, Jack Ryan apparently has, because that thing is, is that like doing three okay? seasons, man. And, and apparently it's what? good. Really? I think so. Okay, sure, whatever. Fine. Answer my question. Okay. Uh, Jeez. And the way this movie begins is very understated. Uh, and when I made a joke about you having... Uh, uh, sensory issues. Oh shoot! Did I do that before we started recording? I did. Potentially, didn't we? yeah. <laughs> this is a little inside-outside baseball. <laughs> this show is going nowhere fast, just like this movie, <laughs> except it goes somewhere very quick. 
Uh, Color Out of Space is very much a sensory smorgasbord. Before we get to any of like the actual movie itself, I would say we are just bombarded with like up close people drinking water and uh nick cage can't stop smelling what has come with the meteorite even though nobody else can smell it uh basically and yes there's a little bit of color stuff but i can i'm sure they're saving most of that for the end because the the color out of space thing sure but really just and this goes with the direction this goes certainly with the audio like it's almost too much but in a way that's not it's not something that I feel like it's a normal subtle. theater goer. It's yeah, subtly, yeah. it's subtly, um, it's subtly like builds on itself and becomes almost unnerving. Like it, it's not unnerving, but it's like it's not unnerving in the like like it's creepy. It's unnerving in the like it's just so loud. It's so much of it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's with every perception, like taste. You know, like maybe this is a little bit later, but all of his his food is has become tainted you know with this meteorite and with, so does the meteorite taint the water or does the water already oh i mean exist yeah so i mean we can we'll, we can get into it but but okay but there's we'll get into that then I, I, do you really want to jump into the meteorite and what i thought i was kind of getting there but maybe i was also it's so hard to talk about this movie in terms of plot points because it's very much a and i can't remember what movie we talked about this with or even where we read this but remember we read something about movies that distinguish between uh and then this happened and then this happened rather than and because of that this happened type stuff yeah you know? yeah, yeah. i do that remember was? that conversation and i don't remember what we were talking about it was the difference between scripts that are very much propelled it seems from one scene to the next and scripts that just kind of build on scenes like and then this happened and then and then and then right color out of space is very much an and then movie you know like it's not like one thing necessarily leads to another uh, but it's just full of all this sensory information while it's doing that yeah, but yeah it builds an uneasiness it builds an otherworldly feel which is which is ex okay perfect nail head did i you okay. just because this is beyond the shadow of a doubt I classify this movie as cosmic horror. That's what it is. This is all the horror that comes from this film. Doesn't matter that it's happening from people. It doesn't matter. It's happening to two person. It's caused by an extraterrestrial and out of space or something from somewhere else. So when we start getting into uh, your questions about the water and whatnot, we actually get the answer directly from the movie from Tommy Chong at the, end of the film he gives us a direct answer that's true that's and, the and, most explanation we get in the whole thing and it and, it, and it's it, it is uh exacerbated uh, that that answer is actually exacerbated i don't know if that's the right word but if i'm gonna i'm gonna go with it um mm -hmm. with with the follow-up sequences with uh that we've that we'll, we'll end up talking about and then some of the stuff before that it all builds up and does give us that direct answer that you're kind of looking for okay um but but the but but i mean ultimately yes the the meteorite does cause a growth in plants it mutations in animals um hmm. uh, uh <laughs> there's the 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 poisoning of the water and it's you know whether or not the the water is actually poisoned it's never that's not so clear as it is that there is something in the water whether it's poison okay. or not, it's, I mean, it's, it, but it comes from the meteorite. Yes. And that's probably on purpose because the hydrologist, uh, word, well, sorry, Ward Phillips, which is another uh, Easter egg. Did you catch that one? Oh yes. 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 Howard Phillips, Howard Phillips. HP Lovecraft. Yeah. Right. So, and this will tie back, I think later, uh, to what could be the elephant in the room, but HP Lovecraft, obviously very recently, I mean, I guess very recently it's it's been foregrounded his rampant racism but this movie does not leave that untouched either so I think we'll get there but Howard Phillips or sorry Ward Phillips being the hydrologist that comes onto the scene and finds the tainted water I guess it is 
does that even take place after the meteorite lands though it, it does it, it does okay, take place right. he doesn't find out about the water until significantly later the, the meteorite lands and that he's scene there. where he's in tommy chong because we only get two scenes of tommy chong Correct. and he gets a glass of water at tommy chong's place so. right and they mentioned okay. that it's all brackish and and that it happens in the winter but it shouldn't be happening now and yeah okay all right okay and I'll say, okay, I think this is where the source material is really getting surfaced. And yes, at the beginning, it's kind of, it's not as in your face, but you also don't know why. And it's going to become additive by the end of the film. But w the more I read about the actual story, Color Out of Space, the more I read about H.P. Lovecraft and how he was uh, disappointed with the portrayal of alien life, uh, how it was often so humanoid and, and all right. this stuff. So he wanted with this story to create something that was truly otherworldly truly outside uh the realm of human experience right and i think the movie is essentially trying to give us that and in the beginning it takes the form of all these kind of different you know focuses and, and assaults on the senses so i think the the film is trying to translate that to screen and honestly i think succeeds very largely like to the point like i started watching this last night and usually you know i try to get into bed by midnight lately just to kind of do away with old habits but i couldn't stop watching this and nothing is essentially happening this is very early on in the film where you know nothing's so weird that i can't uh, tear my eyes away from the screen is happening right but i couldn't still like it's it's pretty engrossing another yeah. word that i could have highlight engrossing is good what's wrong with that it's it's fine but it's got the word gross in it oh okay Ugh. i can't believe how gross i'm being right now <laughs> I know. I, I I actually think that uh that that uh that I in, number one I, I you know I agree with you. I think that uh that the movie is is quite engaging. Uh, the other but the other thing being that that for a movie where it is a an hour and fifty minutes, but boy man, does this movie go play? It, like it does things for an hour and fifty minutes. Like you're you're not. Or it does not do things for. <laughs> right, but but it does it, when it when it's not doing things, it's still keeping you right. going. Like you're still like, I don't like what is happening. Why does this keep going? What is going on now? And what is happening now? And what's why why oh, why still nothing? Why is it so creepy then? Right, what's and 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 I mean, and you get there are a bunch of little things, you know, and 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 the, the uh, I think that the meteor the meteor lands about twenty five minutes into the movie if that yeah yeah and and then you are then you're just dealing with with the the the, the various changes manipulations the the all the stuff that's happening to them mentally physically <laughs> all just very polite words that you're using right now <laughs> it's <laughs> to describe it's yeah it's i mean it's hard to explain the 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 color is really pretty it's like purpley pink <laughs> So it's it's magenta because that's a color I forgot I didn't even uh, clip that trivia but it's a color that doesn't it doesn't exist without human interaction yes or something like that on the visible spectrum which is again what Lovecraft was trying to get at in the the, the way it's described in the book I'm sure is is gorgeous is but strictly it's actually just referred to, like it's it's described as a beautiful color it's, they don't it's, use the word magenta or any color yeah no, it's yeah. just it's the color. But I think it's it's cinematically represented really well yes. by the director, by the cinematography. Yes, like it's muted at first for sure. And it's not even overused, I think, towards the end when it shows up a lot more often. Right. But I, I, I love the colors regardless in this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> it's like no matter what I do, I can't stop thinking of the mom. <laughs> is it is, everything I say is colored by my brain having the hardest time letting go of quite possibly the grossest thing in the entire movie. And okay, well let's okay, so let's talk so let's talk about this. So after the the me, the meteor has landed, it, it lands at a time when the the fa we've got a good handle on who the family is already. Within 20 minutes, you have a good handle on dad's a bit of a gomer, mom's the the like she's got her head in the game for work. The daughter is a little, you know, she's she doesn't want to be there, even though she's like Alexandrian Wiccan, you know, right. Uh, the, the the son is a pothead, but he's, you know, he's cool, whatever. And then there's the youngest <laughs> son who's who's uh, just kind of happy to be alive. He's just he he's there. And uh, 
Hmm. And we're, we're given some moments throughout this where we see how they interact. The uh, at one point, the the youngest boy is caught sitting outside whistling at the um, at a well. Man in the well. At the man in yeah. the well, and and we're never given any. There's no man in the well that we know of, but. You know, this is all after the. I think we do hear the whistling back, though. Where we, we hear, hear noise, the, yeah, but I don't yeah. know that it's whistling. I don't remember. Or, but, yeah, or just audio. But but we're 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 finding out that that more and more that this this something is happening and it, things aren't quite right and and uh, and mom is. I'm guessing it's the bit in the kitchen, right? Uh, no, I mean that's stuff hasn't really gone off the rails at that point yet. Still, like she's just cutting up stuff in the kitchen, going through carrots, and goes right through two of her fingers with what must have been the sharpest knife I've ever seen. Like just right <laughs> through those things, like they themselves were carrots. Well, I mean those carrots were tough. You could hear no. you could hear the force that she's putting because it's sure. making yes, the no. big. It's, mm, chunk, it could happen. Chunk. Chunk, and then the fingers come off. Have you ever tried to get through bone, though? And then mm. she, and then she, and then she puts her fingers up, and she says, "Dinner's ready." <laughs> it was good. It was good. Okay, yeah, dinner's ready, and she's just. And then, and then this actually, that moment though, does lead to further information about what's happening. So, so they rush off to the hospital. Um, the oldest boy is left in charge. Is told uh, uh, he needs to put the alpacas away. Uh, and uh, the animal of the future, the animal of the future. He Nick should Cage hang out. has all the best lines in this movie. He, by the way. he should hang out with John Cusack and talk about they could talk about the animal of the future and the sport of the future, which was uh, <laughs> and say anything was kickboxing. Oh, oh um, yeah. yeah, he flat out says sport of the future. But uh, we're we're also given a, a moment where where um that the, they're all gone and the kid is supposed to put the the animals away and then he's gone for hours and he doesn't realize. The time has passed. He doesn't like he got lost. And he put the animals away, but then they're back out because the sister finds him. Right. So he's like, I don't. The know. next morning, like hours have gone by, but he doesn't know. He's like, I got lost. I don't know where I was. And this is all hinted at. This is I. I think you're probably right, but it, it's not like we know at this point. Like, oh, time has passed, and that's what's happened. You know. Right. No. I mean, we, we're we're making grand assumptions here. Also, possibly. Right. But. Uh. So. So. Th this kind of leads to to throughout the movie as we're we're continuing on and now I think I know what you're talking about because it's really the only other <laughs> I don't know bit. how yes when I mentioned the mom you would think oh is the disturbing part where she cuts off his fingers and I'm like no not even close yeah okay it's it's the it's the if Rob Botine were still making uh doing effect work they would have called him for this uh, I don't know who that is Rob Botine I'm sure Rob Botine did the effects for the thing. Oh, okay. For John Carpenter, I should know. Uh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. And then he retired, uh, and he now is like he's like a like a real estate agent or something. In like Why Texas. wouldn't you after doing the effects for the thing? I don't. Yeah, know. you're done. Put it away, man. You, you, you've done it. You've done. It. You're the winner. <laughs> no, okay? I can't stop. I can't stop picturing him like burying his special effects tools in like a, a foot of concrete underneath his house, so he can just live out his life with his dog. Yeah, he. Well, he poured a bunch of latex in there too, so that yeah. it's soft. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> uh, it he's, he's the John Wick of definitely uh, yeah, oh, of, of, of effects. Okay. Stuff. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, so we're we slowly <laughs> see. Um, Again, yeah, like like the vegetation. All we we see, uh, uh, Nicholas Cage's tomatoes have now grown to huge, huge proportions, and the peaches are gigantic. They all taste awful. This is, I think, after the bug comes out of the thing, the egg in the well. Right. We officially see a mutated bug. That it's a cross between a cat or a, a, a butterfly and a and a um. Mantis, maybe, or something. Yeah, or or a grasshopper is what I oh, thought it might have been. Sure. Uh, so we see that, and it's purple, of course. It's kind of the, the weird color. It's like weird magenta. shades of the magenta. Sure. Uh, we're we're slowly <laughs> seeing, you know, uh, uh, Nicholas Cage is scratching his arms a lot and his body, and he's getting itchy, and and everything is slowly like deteriorating. They're they're getting snipey with each other. Um, the the little boy is starting to see more things, uh, and and eventually we get to a, a point where <laughs> I don't even know how to how do you describe getting right? to this moment? Like now you know the, the why. Okay, I'll tell you how we get to this moment. How do we get to the weird moments? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me, you you talked about Nicolas Cage. How did you like Nicolas Cage in this thing? Like you talked about him maybe being the cagiest 
he's been, which wasn't true because he had, uh, you know, he, he, I feel like he has port of call and he was, else. he was he way cagier in port of call. He was way cagier in, uh, in, in Mandy even. Mandy this is, even maybe. This yeah. is good. He's got some good cageness to it, but it's, it's like, it's, it's, a uh, this is the same kind of cage that you like. He's like relaxed. He's like, he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to be crazy. I'm going to be nuts, but more like a dad. Yes. Yes. Okay. But, but then weirdly enough, he like goes when he does go a little nuts, especially at first, it's like he just starts doing a character with like a voice and everything. He does a voice. For a bit. Yeah. It's kind of strange. And then yes, at the drop of a hat, he's back to nice dad. It's the weirdest thing and it's fantastic. It works great. I <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's fan it's terrific. And I guess uh, Stan Lee was a huge fan of Vampire's Kiss. Have you ever seen that? Oh sure, that? that makes okay. sense. Yeah, he basically <laughs> told Nicolas Cage, "Vampire's Kiss," and Cage was like, "Oh okay." So I don't know. Sure, why not? Uh, but so yes, Cage is is weird uh, and doting in a way still to his wife. Uh, takes her to the hospital, brings her back. Uh, the alpacas. Uh, got out but he put them back in but then the kids go out to check on them and we get the oh no we don't we don't yet see it do we we see like close-up weird things about it so the 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 daughter and the um and the, the older son are trying to figure out what's going on and they end up outside basically what that sound is coming from the alpaca barn they can hear the alpacas screeching they don't know what the noise is they go outside they can see the like the the bright flashing lights are in there and uh and the mother comes down and they see the they see the youngest boy standing in front of the barn and mom comes down to rescue him they try to run and they try to get everybody and in doing so mom is down on her knees like holding the sun and the the light just kind of engulfs them in these almost tentacles it just kind of engulfs them and they start screaming and making noise and we don't really see anything but but yet but the, essentially they get fused together. They get fused together. The little the boy is fused like through her. She he's on like if he's facing her and she's hugging him, he's now th- like in her back. Sure, and his face sounds... is sticking out of the back and we see his hand that before we ever Later, see Later, not yet. In fact, why I mentioned Nicolas Cage is cuz when he comes out to see what all the screaming is about, he's pretty level-headed about the whole thing. So, like and he gets a full-on view and he's like, "Oh. Oh." And and takes him back. <laughs> which which in in the context of the movie I think works because no he's yeah been it's like absolutely that. yes this sure. is this is the moment though that I have issue with is that oh. the the neither of the kids seem to be really affected by this but especially the older boy who has at no point yet had any real like anything go on he is I mean he's dis like he had the time thing. He hasn't had any weird reactions to anything. And he's like, oh, man, this is weird. What a bummer. <laughs> but that kind of fits. I mean, Nicolas Cage is unnerving because it's unnerving. But, like, they've kind of played him off the sun as a pothead so far. So, like, his, I mean, his sister's like, lay off the pot a couple times. So yeah. It's, that almost still works for me. And then, but then then it, it's, it's you know, then you get the little, the, the younger girl. And she's not that young. I mean, she's, like, she's probably supposed to be 16, 17, actually. Sure. The, the, you get the, the, the daughter who's Lavinia, Lavinia, Lavinia. yeah Lavinia. Who, who's like talking to mom and saying it's okay i'm here like she's clearly lost it you know she's gone off the deep end uh but but the the the, the, the moment is actually really great the effect is fantastic and it's terrific because they're brought in and put on the couch and all you can see is you can see mom's head over the edge of the couch and mm-hmm. her hand and then you can see the back of the couch and you can see the little hand that's the son's hand and then the camera swings around and you see them yeah fused together and we we were kind of given the idea from Lavinia that she thinks that mom is trying to reabsorb him now and yeah and i'm you can go freud if you, all the way home if, with that stuff if you want i guess but sure i it, okay. it, it's it, it's it's a it's a it's a wonderful moment that is then <laughs> that is then taken they 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 they're like they 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 realize that sunlight is burning the the mm-hmm. their bodies so they take they take her up to the to the attic and leave her there which then 
finally allows for let's go find out what the noise uh, in the barn was. Nick Cage shotguns up, heads into the barn, and we get the most thing creature I've seen since oh, the yeah. thing, where all of the uh, alpacas have now kind of fused into a giant mushy bit, and they're just different mm-hmm. alpaca heads popping out. And Cage has his uh, Cage moment where he just kind of shoots at everything, covered in blood. Yeah, shoots, he, he shoots each head. Yeah, I mean, to, to his credit, yeah, he does a thorough job. I, which yeah, which, so, which okay, actually so, this and this leads to <laughs> this leads to one of my favorite bits in the movie where he comes back upstairs shotgun in hand covered in blood oh boy the the sister and the, and the brother are still in the attic with mom and and mom and absorbed son uh and he says i'm going to take care of everything and the 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 daughter lavinia is like like you took care of the alpacas and he just goes get out Kicks them out, and you're like, okay, he's gonna he's gonna gun down his wife, child, monster thing. No, he gets right up into her face and says, "We're gonna go traveling. We're gonna go to Greece. We're gonna do. We're gonna go to Rome. We're gonna do all these." And then he gets up and walks out the door. He, hey, he kisses her. He does kiss her, and, and they they do not shy away from the I don't know the the ectoplasm oh, so that is good. left behind or between them. Yeah. He goes the down. Ties that bind, as it were. He goes downstairs, <laughs> pours himself a drink, drops a, a, an ice cube in his scotch glass, and in the cube we can see the the faint paint. Uh, the, the color is part of the ice. Sure. So we know that, the, and we know that he's been drinking throughout this whole thing. The we've already talked about how Ward H. P. Phillips Lovecraft, uh, the the biol no the the hydrologist hydrologist yeah he uh, although he calls him a toxologist at one point when he shows up right he he uh we we know that the water at this point is bad and shouldn't be drank and and all that okay 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 i i'm gonna do this again i'm i apologize in advance but when we watched haunt we had a little at least mini conversation about nihilism and whether or not i thought that movie was going to end up being nihilistic and that it, it kind of didn't care. And I don't know if I really explained real well where I was going with all of that, but it's essentially at the, the point of the alpaca pile, we'll say in this film (laughs) where I kind of started to have the same thoughts like, okay. And I think I, I really drilled down into what I was trying to say with that before. And it was the difference between a movie that, again, that has something to say. And we talked about haunt, how it basically did or wanted to and, and, and all that. And a movie that by the end of it, you're just kind of like, okay, why? Which I'm not saying doesn't have any right to exist in a way, sure. but certainly doesn't, you know, uh, climb my own personal stupid ladder or whatever. Sure. You, you, you are, I think, I think, uh, for anybody who's a new viewer to this, which guy, if you've gotten this far, holy crap, <laughs> this was the one to start with. Yeah. Ryan, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan definitely requires a uh, purpose to his story. Whereas I can certainly head cannon and, or just straight up ignore it if I need to, because I like the visuals. Oh, yeah. And I'm not saying I don't like the visuals. No, and no, no. Again, I, I get I, that. That's what I mean by saying, not that it doesn't have a right to exist, but no, I, I get still, that if at the end i'm kind of asking my uh, self that question like okay why though and at the point you know when the mom and the kid are together and the apaca pile and stuff like that i'm like okay going into the wikipedia i understand like i said that that lovecraft was really trying to create something outside of the human experience and reading more about that it was he wanted it to be so outside and speaking of the thing that they the viewer being didn't know if the thing <laughs> sorry not the actual thing if the monster in the movie if the the color out of space was emotional uh was it moral was it even conscious sure you know like questions like that right which i love like i love films that do ask that question but when it comes to in fact the thing is actually a really good point of reference here when it comes to movies like that that also want to be monster movies that want to still portray evil in a way, I'm always curious as to if they can work out that balance. And the thing absolutely does this, probably because it's better constructed. I mean, the thing to me is one of the best constructed movies of all time. So yeah, I mean, no insult to the color out of space, but I'm curious if this movie 
is able to have its cake and eat it too in that way? Like, is it able to say like, is this even evil, but still wanting to be something scary and be something objectionably evil? But some people might think so. And I think that's where I don't know that this movie is is (laughs) the best. I loved things about it. I wonder if I needed, quote unquote, in a way, the, the mom monster or... Again, this is all armchair, which I guess is what we do. I don't know why I'm increasingly uncomfortable with that. Yeah, but. it's real weird to me that you're like, I don't know if we should <laughs> if we should be doing. That. Why do we have a show? Why are we? It was just <laughs> weird to find myself at that point, kind of longing for the nuanced commentary of a movie like Haunt. Interesting. At that, and this is halfway through the film. You know, sure. maybe we'll get okay. somewhere by the end. Me wondering, you know, still why at this point. So. Could you fix me maybe in this regard? Because you do, you, are you saying it's just visuals that can get you through or? I, I mean, no, I, I can absolutely get like, there are, there are, I'm sure movies that you could point out and say, this movie says nothing. There's nothing to it. It has no point And it's got nihilism at the forefront. And I can watch that and I can say, oh, I, I really enjoyed that. I like that for this. I liked the I like the the gore effects to it. I like the the concept behind it. I I did find a reason to the nihilism. Whatever. Uh, but I but it's not like like obviously it's it, no different than video games. A great video game and a good video game are easily separated by a good story. Well written story separates movies. You can have a good movie and a great movie written and directed by the same person but but one script is just better the story is better it's it's so yeah i mean it matters but i can disassociate like i could watch just a movie that's about nothing you know what you're what you're talking about is is okay is the is the color out of space inherently evil well not no it's it's not inherently evil it's doing things to these people that to us from an external perspective seem bad, but we're also told, and here, let's jump into this. At the very end of the movie, actually not even at the very end of the movie, we are very clearly given a, a um, idea that whatever came on the meteorite is very similar in respect to the lonesome death of Jordy Verrill, except in the, this moment, <laughs> uh, instead of it just, I'm going to grow and be plant life, this is very clearly got sentience to it. This very clearly has something going on because we see it in the daughter's eyes. We see it in, we he, we know that Tommy Chong can hear them. We, I was to say before that is when we get the Tommy Chong explanation. Yeah. Well, well he, yeah, he can, he, he, he hears them under his underground. He hears them in his house. He knows they're there. He knows that like, like he, we, we, uh, um, he goes into exposition. He's like, it's trying to recreate something that's more familiar and that's to its it, home. Right yeah. there. It it's it came from somewhere, it didn't die, and it's trying to figure out what to do. So what does it do? It tries to adapt. To adapt, it does what it does. This is like you can argue this is no different than the face huggers in Alien. It's no different than that at all. They are creatures that are inherently bad because they kill humans and we identify with the humans, not the aliens. So yeah, it's bad. But this is very clearly a life form or multiple life forms. And we know it from the mutations that it causes. We know it from, again, from Tommy Chong. We know it from the young boy who's having a conversation in the well with the thing we we know that it it makes the mother try to do something to the daughter eventually and we are given an outright view of the aliens alive on their home world in their kind of whatever they are whether it's microscopic or not but but ward outright knows he sees them he knows that it's a real creature real beings and the thing, as it realizes what's going on around it, you know, it's, I mean, it's, 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 again, this goes back to the thing. The alien wants to do the same thing the thing does. It wants to assimilate. It wants to exist because that's what life forms do. This one goes, I don't know what else to do. I'm going to leave. And in leaving it, you know, it, it, the color dives, it goes back into space, but it's also left itself there which we get at the with the last um 
the the last uh, 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 monologue about the the giant aquifer and and he's like I'm never gonna drink this water, right? So it, it's I mean, yeah, I mean, sure, there's some, there's nihilism here, of course there is, but but also consider the actual reality, like just imagine like what what's what goes in the water like literally what's in our water literally you want the perfect like flint michigan man <laughs> okay okay all right like <laughs> i'm sorry it's it's you can call it nihilism all you want flint michigan is a freaking it's it's an epicenter of this nihilism okay I, i'm and that nihilism still says something all right let's i think i need to stew on it but i like it um you mentioned the mom who does reach a level of kind of uh, evolution, I guess, let's say, uh, and appears to attack the daughter. And yeah, I would give you that. I think one of the keys is that she doesn't ever act like she's, she's killed by the, uh, by ward and the, Oh no, she's killed by Nick cage. But at this point, well, Ward and the sheriff have come back to the house and kind of seen what's been happening. The sheriff shoots her in the face and blows up that head. But, but Nicholas, but it cuts right to Nick cage with a shotgun. So I want to say that cause cage comes in and then shoots it again. That's how I read it. Anyways. I'd have to watch that again, but I, I think I felt to me like Nick cage was the one that pulled the trigger on that. But either way, the, what I'm getting at is that the mom doesn't actually hurt anything. So whereas the thing like that monster does, uh, actually hurt people. Yeah. Well, I mean, to, uh, to be okay. So, so yeah, you're, you're right in the sense that when the mom evolves or mutates, whatever she does something like she's trying to do something to the daughter. Maybe it's communicate. Maybe it's injured. She doesn't do anything though. She kind of drools on her and I think they're careful. Yes. Bit. She does drool on her a lot, actually. <laughs> and actually one of the things that I noticed in, uh, and I remember, I remembered this from, from seeing it in the theater and it's not, it, maybe it's just the, the, the way I was watching it, the light or something, but she actually, like the color she out think? of, out of film, she, when she kind of like, she doesn't mount the daughter, like she doesn't get on top of her exactly, but she is kind of on top of her. Like she's just leaning over, over her. Yeah. You can see. Well, she has like seven arms at this point. So she's suspended herself. You yeah. can see her hands, her arms come in and like rub her daughter's hair. Like she like does that. Oh, I didn't notice that. And that's creepy. Like, so that's all, that's also a, a, like, I don't know if she was. I'm not going to kill you and absorb you. I'm already doing that. Or I'm going to kill you and absorb you when I'm done with that. <laughs> yeah. They're, what I guess what I'm saying is they're careful to leave that kind of ambiguous. But smartly so, even though, like I said, the, the thing gets away. I'm obsessed now with this comparison, comparison with the thing, even though I think what I'm realizing is that this goes way far back across the genre, even of just this idea of, you know, telling a story or I guess what we might be, obliquely calling nihilistic and uh or even just trying to be scary or creepy or there's so much more here that i'm not prepared to <laughs> analyze but uh, okay i think part of the reason is that i did just finish watching this an hour ago and I haven't I, I really need to start finishing these movies the night before so i at least have uh, an unconscious eight hours to think about the thing again the 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 movie not the actual thing always thinking about the thing can't help that so i guess i mean i don't have an answer i'm i'm really still trying to make sense of what that movie left me with i think in a way which is saying something all on its own and i before we go i don't want to uh leave out some of the best lines that nick cage did have in this thing uh, when the sheriff and the <laughs> hydrologist show up and he's already bloody and kind of going insane and he says, oh, I'm glad to see you guys. You know, we've been having problems out here. Car. And this is after the <laughs> mom and everything. But the stuff he chooses to say is car, telephone, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Life in the sticks. Life in, which, is a, <laughs> which is, of course, a, a note back to the mayor of the town who, who gave him guff for hospital right. or something. Well, yeah, I didn't even get she was the mayor when she showed up at first. Yeah, because she he called them down when the meteorite first landed. I also didn't get... <laughs> Until like the third reference when he says, we all stick together. That didn't really land. <laughs> and and definitely before we go, I do want to go back to all, to, to all the racism stuff. Sure. Uh, I don't think this movie is necessarily a reaction against that like something like Lovecraft County is. Lovecraft Country, yeah. Sorry. But 
is there a county in the country? Think about it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't think this is one of those, but I think it does good by not necessarily ignoring it altogether. Ward Phillips being, you know, a black dude who very much interested. There's kind of a budding romance between him and the daughter who are a mixed race, something Lovecraft extremely dislikes. Oh, yeah. And he's also the last man standing by the end. So I think it was a clever enough nod to be like, hey, we we are aware of this, but still, sure. you know, sure. not a movie that's meant to attack that head on. It's not one of those movies. No, 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 no. So it, it didn't, and I and it didn't need to. It, it, no, I, that, I that's mean, fine. It's that it's not. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it was a, it was a solid way of doing it though. Like it was yeah. a solid way of of acknowledging something like that. And I did like the ending. How it all, it's all great colorless ash you know by right. the end and certainly muted and that's i'm guessing some of that final monologue is taken directly from the book because i think the, both the opening and the closing are super well written you know it sound like they were written by somebody that could do that sure sure word smithing yeah i haven't read uh i haven't read this uh the lovecraft story i haven't read a lovecraft in a while so i guess it's one of his most popular color out of space is the, a lot say his best short story it seems yeah i truly don't remember being like <laughs> there there were the, the ones that come to mind are not this is never one of them so i i don't you know no oh, i'm sorry the color o-u-r out of space color. Yeah, that's the story okay closing thoughts good sir anything that we've left unsaid before I star it. No, star it. I like the I think this is a fun movie overall. I I, I do. I, I like the story. I again I think it I think it go it moves at a good clip for an hour and fifty minutes, man. That movie never feels like an hour and fifty minutes. Certainly. Fun, again, weird descriptor. I think we're going that uh, that's my it's, theme of the ween I, I, is our descriptors that we use to your, describe your, these your movies. Your ween theme? <laughs> ween theme. But yeah, it's a it's a it's it's a movie. Good horror movie. You know, I'll get back to uh, whether or not watch the thing until I can come up with a what I'm left with uh, until I can come up with a why. I'm asking the question why. I haven't come up with an answer just yet. That's Let's fair. Put it that way. All right. Okay. Uh, pff, Twenty stars out <laughs> of nineteen and a half. Perfect. Love it. Next week, are we going to do another wiener? We've got to. Okay, it's going to be, uh, I, you know, during the week I was like, I'm going to write it down and that way when we get to this point in the show, I'm going to list them all off to him in a very orderly fashion and he's going to have this great list to choose from and it's going to be great. But I can only remember The Conjuring and The Haunting, probably because they kind of, it's similar titles. I feel like that's why I'm going there. And His House, the newcomer that, did you watch that trailer yet? I have not actually, I forgot okay. all about it. Uh, I, no, I, I'm good. Haunting or Conjuring are gr both movies I am happy to discuss with you. I think they both mm. have interesting stories. Uh, I think uh, The Haunting came at an interesting time for horror movies. Uh, it, it has a little, it's got some really good history to it. And if you do watch that one, if we do choose that, I would highly recommend you watch the original as well. Yeah, that would be my, my text there. Uh, do you want to wait until I have the list ready for you? And then you can have a more seasoned I, I'm, picking. I'm seasoned. Let, let me ask you this. Okay. I don't know why that doesn't make sense. Would you rather watch Orm, AKA the ocean master? Oh, or right. wait, Owen Wilson. I, I don't know. Or, or taken, uh, or uh, somebody who may have, Oh, you're telling me that Patrick, Patrick Wilson is in Wilson. the conjuring directed by James Juan million. I don't, mm, part of the reason mm, Patrick Wilson is in Aquaman because I like Patrick Wilson a great deal. And I don't know if I have a good, I don't know if I've answered that why yet either. I like Patrick Wilson. Yeah. Let's do that. You want to do the conjuring? Can we conjure? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Conjuring. Oh, okay. Love, uh, love me a farminga sister too. Far farminga. Yeah. I don't know if I'm. There's, there's. Is that part of the horror? Uh, the, I, the I, farminga I, sounds like a, an eldritch thing. She, it, she, she could be. <laughs> uh, oh, this isn't eldritch. What am I? Yeah, this isn't Lovecraft. It is so. not. This is actually mm. so. Uh, Vera farminga. Uh, she, uh, yes. Vera Farmiga, is it, is it, is there an, it's, no, it's Farmiga, Vera Farmiga, Farmiga. Uh, and her sister Tessa, 
What is her sister's name? And that's the Conjuring, everybody. Come back next week for the Conjuring. But Vera, you know, you 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 should be pretty familiar with Vera. Uh, her name sounds super. Uh, was, uh, she the, the Departed? She I mean, was the in the Departed. You don't like. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I like most of that movie. There's just one huge section of it I don't like. Uh, <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio that's section. That's the part I don't like. <laughs> She's also um she was pretty pretty excellent in the uh, TV show Bates Motel. That show, ah, yeah, right. she's Dear Mother. All right. So The Conjuring is next week. Yeah. Come check that out. You can always find us at podcast at bookclub4movies.com and Facebook and or Twitter. And with that, it's I feel like I should have done this earlier in the show. Time to bring back... Stupid trivia. Oh, hit me with it. Hit me I'm with sorry. your trivia. Boy, do we have no better movie to come back on the, this with because I tell you, there is just, I have three that I don't even want to choose from that are just the perfect example of IMDb bat trivia. Like Ooh. the very essence of why this exists. Okay, I'm in. Hit me, all three. Okay, oh. Hmm. Do them. I don't know how to do that? Let me check the rules real quick. I can do that. Oh, it says right here. Yes, I knew we didn't bar it. One of the reasons is because I am absolutely certain there. I wish I knew this man and or woman positive that they have filled out 90% of this section because they're all time stamped and they all begin with at around X number of minutes. So somebody, and it, it's not short, like there is tons there's a freaking okay. book's worth it's probably more words than are in the color out of space short story are in the imdb trivia section for this movie okay I'm, I'm 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 engaging in this i gotta look at it now to wit this one at around 10 minutes at dinners okay i'm gonna read this word for word by the way holy crap at, and you weren't yes kidding. uh all apologies to english as a second language uh at dinner's time nathan cook's cassoulet Disgusting Lavinia and having fun Benny and Jack. Cassoulet is a gastronomic dish, fundamentally a stew made with white or green beans and different parts of animal meat. It's typical of the cuisine south to France, specifically in the regions of Languedoc and Midi Pyrenees. It's got to be Mid Pyrenees, right? Uh, no, it's I, not like a Midi. Yeah, who knows? It's, Some of the its ingredients are pork, chop, sausages, bacon bacon crust and confit duck confit duck sure confit duck sorry although some versions include blood sausage being similar to Ugh. another spanish dishes as the austrian fabada the beans of el barco de avila or the catalonian sausage with beans Ugh. its origin is disputed between the french city's castle Nardari and carcassonne and toulouse which castellates are also known as God the Father for Castelnaudary, God the Son for Carcassonne, and God the Holy Spirit for Tuolulouis, referring to the Christian concept of the Trinity. Curiously, Carcassonne is the basis for Carcosa, a fictional city mentioned for the first time in the short story, An Inhabitant of Carcosa. We switched to a uh, trivia for the short story, An Inhabitant of Carcosa, written by Ambrose Bierce and published in 1886, which turned in one of Pillars of Mythos de Cthulhu, created by H.P. Lovecraft. <laughs> All I heard in there was Cthulhu, Lovecraft, and Carcassonne. Are we playing Carcassonne? <laughs> I still game. don't understand how to play it. I, I oh. need to play that as a board game with you, and you need to tell me how it works. Do you remember when we played it? Yeah, I always lose because I don't know how to play it. <laughs> I, feel like I we stopped I, because I kept winning. Because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Every time I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I know that if I put this here, but how do I make more? Somehow you're always like, yeah, well, duh, you're an idiot. And I don't get it. I still do this. This day. is as good of a trivia as what I just read, what we're talking about right now. <laughs> Or maybe you'll enjoy this one. Okay. Did you know one of Nathan Gardner's Nicholas Cage children is played by Julianne Hilliard? Hilliard is the son of Ariane Martin, who played Cage's daughter in Drive Angry in 2011. <laughs> I knew there was a Drive Angry connection because if we're not driving on this show, this show is based around Mark Dacascos and family. <laughs> no, okay. No, no, no. This, this is the Drive Angry, the Nick Cage kind of take on the Mark Dacascos classic. <laughs> Which in, a, yes, in and no, of itself is... was a take 
uh, was given to Fast and the Furious. That's what I think. <laughs> No, this is this is a classic bad IMDb trivia. It's it's the, the the classic retro trivia where they make it fit. It seems it's just one of my favorite. Do you want the last? Have we gone too far? Is this no? You got to do <laughs> it. Ten At minutes of point, trivia. Already? Yeah, it's too. It's not long enough. Okay, it's from Mister Timestamps again because this happens at around fifty-five minutes. Nathan complains Benny and Lavinia about if they know the cost to the alpacas. It's there's a part in the movie where she's like, do, do you yeah. know how much those cost? What what do you think this trivia is going to be about from here on out? I, I'm I'm hoping that he's going to break down the cost of an alpaca one by one and then give us. As of 2019, the year the movie premiered, a breeding female of alpaca, in depending on its quality of the specimen, has a cost between five thousand and thirty thousand dollars, <laughs> and the stud males can go for ten thousand dollars upwards. While the young males and geldings, whatever, it is, can start from five hundred dollar <laughs> upwards. Oh, Ryan! Oh, Ryan! So good this week, right? I love these, but I also just think it's adorable that you are. Are do you not know what a gelding is? Oh no! Is that are are they? <laughs> <laughs> I can no longer call alpacas adorable after this movie, but is, is that a uh, a young alpaca? No, a gelding is any is most any animal that's been castrated. Horses <laughs> are geldings, alpacas are geldings. Wow, that just makes this even better. He went that far to be like one without its balls. And we know we know <laughs> that all of the 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 alpacas he has in the movie are female. Well. They're meant to be. Do so. we know? Yeah, because he milks yep. the one. Remember, he milks it. True. Okay, and then he's right. like, he's mm. like, I find that if you give them fennel, it increases the yield and the flavor. And then he <laughs> gives it like one tug, and it's a really good like long stream of milk. <laughs> yep, and the kid it. goes, "Good one, Dad." And he goes, "Thank you, son." <laughs> and then he offers it. <laughs> right, he offers it to to uh, to H. P. Lovecraft. And, and the, the hydrologist goes, he's the entire time they keep showing his face. He's just disgusted by the entire thing. Uh, and he goes, uh, I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> I take it back. This is the why. This is the movie. You found it and we did it. The color out of space. We've done just so much time on wonderful things. Do you have anything else you want to talk about for the rest of the show? I do have one wet, wet of the hell movie. <laughs> oh, what okay, happened great. there? You're Madeline Kahn from Young Frankenstein. Let's go. <laughs> uh, because I don't, I don't know how this occurred, but it was definitely. Uh, uh, actually, I guess I've got two movies. Uh, there, there was. Uh, it's fine. I'm, I'm to the point. I'll warn you where we re like we try to keep it close to an hour. There is a point where we go past an hour. Where I'm just like I don't care. Like two hours now. Just go. Just, just go. go. Uh, so <laughs> we were, we, right after Beth got her surgery done, uh, we were flipping through movies that we hadn't watched in a while. And I forget, totally forgot to mention that we watched the Royal Tenenbaums and I haven't hmm. seen that in probably a decade. Still good, man. I love that movie. It is also hilariously for as much as it's quoted and appreciated and people dress up as the characters rewatching it. Now that movie is maybe one of the least Wes Anderson movies that he does. Really? Yeah, totally. Go rewatch it and watch hmm. it after knowing, like after having watched Grand Budapest, after watching uh, Mr. Fox, Rushmore, all of that. Watch those movies and then go back and watch this one. And while it totally has every hallmark of, and I'm not saying it's not, it's obviously him. Like you're just say, what about like Rushmore? No, he's arguably gotten more Wes Anderson over time. For sure. For sure. But, but even Rushmore, like there is just something to this movie where, and I don't know if it's the, 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 the layout of the story or what it is, but there is something about that movie that just exceedingly less, than even Rushmore to me and, and Bottle Rocket. It was just, hmm. and it's still, like, it's still totally Wes Anderson in every respect. It's just, there's sure, sure. something, I don't know. 
I'm long overdue. I've I've had because Evelyn's never seen any of them, so I've been long overdue to start oh, that boy. trip with my daughter. It's so. gonna be. I am looking forward to hearing. Like with her, I feel like you almost need to go backwards though, because she's so young. I would start with with Bottle Rocket probably actually, yeah, because it's also Bottle Rocket's my. It's great. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. It's not my favorite. It's just I love it. My favorite is still probably Fantastic Mr. Fox. It's good. This is a conversation that would never end. I uh, what the cuss does that mean? <laughs> the the other movie though that we watched uh, we watched the other night because Beth and I had been talking about um, <laughs> we've been talking about skaters for for a, a few days and we were talking about sure. like because everyone every once in a while you just throw up a Tony Hawk video and go dude look how like wicked cool he is like just as a human totally being cool dude. he's totally cool dude hanging ten doing the like this this. This thing he's going like yeah, hang loose. Hey he's guys. doing the hang loose. Hey. The pinky. He goes. He goes. Hey, check it out. It wiggles. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not going to explain that action at you all. You don't want to let the viewer uh, create something out of. We uh, we decided to turn on the Tony Hawk vehicle, gleaming the cube. <laughs> it is it. a Tony Hawk vehicle. Yeah, he's in a vehicle. He drives the Pizza Hut pickup truck. Uh, <laughs> that that movie. I love that movie. I grew up watching that movie over and over again. Uh, I, to this day, watching it now, knowing everything I know about movies, I don't understand so much about that movie. <laughs> <laughs> the least of which being, okay, here's, here is the story of Gleaming the Cube. <laughs> it's not going to make sense. <laughs> A Vietnamese boy is murdered by other Vietnamese people because he realizes that the weight of a shipping container is way off. Now, that sounds like a movie you've seen or would seek potentially. You've got some stuff going on and then it's it's who killed him, why did he get killed? We need we need we need the the the, the why. So now is when we find out that the Vietnamese kid who's murdered of course, is actually an adopted brother of Christian Slater <laughs> for for an undis like we don't know how long, but we we have to make the assumption it's been most of his life. That's kind of the feeling I get. And then we're we're also brought into a situation where his Vietnamese girlfriend doesn't like the gringo brother, Christian Slater, who's a skater loser idiot, uh, who's constantly getting in trouble with the weird cop that at the very end of the movie is like driving him to his brother's gr uh, gravestone and then, sure. and then picking him up and like, they're like flicking his ear and going, Hey, we're cool now. Cause I'm a cop and you're a skater. We're good buddy. What? I need <laughs> so many explanations. Number one, what was this movie originally? Was the skating and the white people were they added in later? Or was that actually what the, did somebody go, dude, I got an idea for this movie. What if we kill a Vietnamese kid and then have a bunch of skaters figure it out? Greenlit. P good questions. Yeah. I miss movies like that because you're right. It's like they took the cops out of something and inserted like any extreme sport. And then, and then, like, and then they did have cops. They still had cops that were just well, no, but not like, useful. As opposed to a detective story where they're right. the ones doing it. And like, no, the heroes, like the, it's triple <laughs> X. Used, skateboarding to save the world triple x is the sequel to gleaming the cube <laughs> that is a spiritual successor to those type of movies yes and also i want to point out that there is a moment in the movie where his friend i think his name is yabo who mm -hmm. for for you know no reason other than because it's a movie and we're gonna make people think this is a good idea he lives in a <laughs> An underground, like he's got, uh, what are they? He lives in like a fallout shelter. I don't remember. Oh, does he? Yeah, okay. he's like, like he, his family. Hey, you his, love fallout. He's got his family house. Like his parents live there, but he lives in the fallout shelter downstairs, where he has built the smallest little half pipe that's like so he can go wing, 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 wing back and forth, and he does it <laughs> really? in the movie. I don't remember a lot of that movie. It seems. And at one point, he goes, "Come on, Brian." You got to just g gleam the cube. And at that point, I was even asking Beth, I'm like, what the hell does this even mean? Gleaming <laughs> the cube. And we get the explanation. And I told her, I was like, I remember there being an explanation and it being as stupid as the title of the movie. And sure enough, he goes, Brian, you got to gleam the cube. 
And he looks at it. Slater looks at this guy and goes, what? And he goes, the cube, Brian. It's that place you go when you're skating. And it's the only thing between you and the board. Like, chasing Mavericks. I feel like you're making fun of this. Ryan, we're chasing Mavericks. That's what we're doing right now. Oh, wow. This is going to get strange real quick here. The Mavericks, they're being, I'm chasing a Maverick. It's the same thing. We're chasing Are, Mavericks. Do you, do you have any other movies? Because I want to get strange as quick as possible here. Get strange. Go. I watched Discovering Mavericks this week. Did you really? Because that was, <laughs> yeah. I looked at it and I actually clicked on it and I went, huh, I could watch that. And then, um, did, can you, did you, now are you talking about chasing Mavericks? The Gerard Butler no. movie that got made after the very much. Okay. Discovering Mavericks is a fantastic documentary. If you want to see the people that literally discovered Mavericks, have them talk about surfing as a spiritual experience, which I love, you know, your mileage may vary not having grown up in California or whatever. Uh, my dad was actually literally, literally one of these people too. Not one of the people that discovered Mavericks, but he was a surfer his whole life and, and very spiritual because of it. It's great if you want that type of experience, that history lesson. Yeah, yeah. The film itself, the music... Oh boy, it's it's almost too much to get now through. No, the, the Chasing Mavericks? No, now I'm talking about the documentary. Chasing Mavericks is a fine movie that we might end up watching soon well, also, nope, but that's not happening. <laughs> there's there's No, no, not we, I'm my family, yeah. Nope. I, yeah. That's I'm coming nope, to your okay. house. <laughs> I will find it. But yeah, that, that that documentary, you'll know pretty quick if it's if the good stuff is enough to get you through it because otherwise the the actual filmmaking, which I hate to say because it's, you know, it's an indie effort and I think it's fantastic what they did and i wouldn't ever wish it not to exist but yeah it's a little bad a little grading as far as that goes yeah a little bad it's a little bad a little bad that's a bummer but that's that's funny that <laughs> we had you mentioned the mavericks before i even got to it that's i great. can't i'm honestly blown away by the fact that we we if you had almost watched it also and we so, came so down, here's the i would almost be less surprised so here's kind of the funny thing though is uh it, i don't know if we need to actually uh, keep any of this in no, ever? We yeah, could no, probably, ahead. we could probably turn this off. Uh, <laughs> I, Maybe we did I, already. I, don't know. I, I love surfing movies. I love movies about oh. surfing. I love documentaries. Oh, hey. Endless Summer. Like I love those movies, man. Very good. Watch the hell out of them. Yeah, in fact, that was... I wanted to boot it up after this because I was like, oh, we got to watch a good one of these like real quick. But I didn't think... Do you ever? My daughter would be because this is all part of. Remember, I said I'm trying to watch a documentary with my daughter more often sure. as part of her learning at home stuff. Yeah, so this was one of those, by the way. So yeah. <laughs> uh, so do you ever see the movie North Shore? I don't think I did. Yeah, I think you should check that one out. That okay. was a good one. It's a totally PG movie. Uh, it's a definitely, it's got a story to it, so it's not good. Oh, not a documentary. No, it's no, it's, oh, this okay. is a bad movie. Uh, but it totally <laughs> has to do with like, with this dingus gringo white kid, howly idiot from, mm. you know, somewhere in like Arizona. I gotta go surf. I gotta go surf it like o Oahu or something. I bet Hawaiians love this movie. It's is what I'm hearing. So all the Hawaiians in the movie are like, let's beat the crap out of that guy. And then there's also this dude named turtle. Who's like, he's the board guy. He's like, I make the boards and I wax the board. I'm turtle. man. <laughs> Nobody listens to tur no, you got to check it out. It's real good. <laughs> <laughs> they remade a crappy version of it too called uh North Shore. It was like remade in like 2004. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Okay, sure. This is a good yeah. one. But following that, I highly highly suggest for your daughter's sake, uh Back to the Beach with uh Frankie sure. and Annette and Pee Wee Herman. Oh, Pee Wee Herman show up And Lori Laughlin and sure. Dick Dale mm. and Stevie Ray Vaughan and uh boy, who else pops up in that movie? Everybody, from what I'm hearing. Uh, yeah, Kooky. I can't remember that dude's whole name. Ed Kooky, whatever his name is. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever? Hey, if it's if it's not Ed Kooky at this point, Ed I'm going to be Kooky. pretty disappointed. Um, did you ever watch Riding Giants? Riding Giants. Yeah, that was the other one. Did I, I ever? <laughs> it was actually Stacy Peralta's follow up to Dogtown and Z Boys. After he made that one. Oh, so, yeah. I, I, we will also watch. I did point. watch that one. It's got uh, uh, Laird, Laird in it. Yes. He's and he's the big, big wave. Writers. He's the big dude. Yeah. He's the main like the main name. People have heard of him. I feel like more than any other. He's yes. The dude I've heard of. He's the dude. Uh, I have one other movie. Ooh. Not much on it. 
Okay. Maybe I just get it out at this point. Enola Holmes. I really wanted to like it. Oh, did you watch it too? I haven't watched it yet, but I really want oh. to like it. I'm not going to like it, am uh, I? You might, you might really like it then. I don't know. It seemed... I don't know what I was expecting. The but, Sherlock Holmes movies with Robert Downey Jr., but but small. No, I, I definitely wasn't expecting that. I, I guess maybe maybe I thought it was going to be more of a mystery or kind of a Sherlock Holmes story, but, you know. It's more Shanghai I, Nights than anything. It's, it's just fine and entertaining enough. And I think uh, our wives like the, the period piece stuff. I feel like I was getting turned off in a way that I'm turned off by period piece movies sometimes. I think it's maybe just a little, there's a little less action to it, which I, w- I was resistant against because I, for a while, thought this was a female produced thing as well, you know, which I like to view through different eyes, you know, and kind of figure out because I know I don't <laughs> understand. <laughs> no, I get it. It's, we've had these conversations before. Yes. Uh, but it's not. It's totally, in fact, I'm curious now if that's the problem, the fact that it is a female story, in fact, produced or, in fact, adapted by a book that was written by a woman, I believe. But then it's all it's it's screenplay and directed completely by a dude. So I don't know if I'm now reading into that, but it did kind of at times feel like two guys trying to tell a woman's story. Like, I don't know. Yeah, there are six books written by Nancy Springer. There you go. Yeah. You might still like it. I like Henry Cavill. So Henry Cavill's just fine. He's not in it a ton. Hey. Uh, in fact, Millie Bobby Brown is, is freaking great. And the the main conceit, not, it's not that conceit, the gimmick of the movie is that she addresses the camera. There's lots of fourth wall stuff. She's the narrator and kind of telling the story and she'll break. That's fun. Uh, yeah, it's fun. It's done well. It's it's cool. It's maybe my favorite part, but it's just the story itself. It didn't wrap me up. Didn't, it didn't grab didn't gross me sure. like color out of space gross to me. <laughs> it's certainly, hey, you want some alpaca meat? <laughs> nobody no. eats alpaca meat no. they make sweaters from them <laughs> i don't even know why you got them i don't know if you watch it let me know we can go back and forth maybe you'll find something in there i uh i i highly 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 recommend uh uh because you mentioned period pieces uh on netflix uh the queen's gambit it's a period in yes, that it's 1950s, don't, don't, but <laughs> don't spoil your or TV spill your TVVB beans yet. TVVBB. That's yeah. those are the TVVBs. TVVB. Yep, those are going to come after. Uh, I think uh, after next week. I think TVVB will be two weeks from now. Uh, this would be First. our third ween, so we will have done four weans by the next ween. So is that enough weens? I don't know. Maybe we can do a fifth ween. If you're the in charge of the weens. You've, you've mentioned the haunting about 50 times, that and the conjuring. So I feel like we should end it with the haunting so that we can get our, which would be great. Tell you what, watch the trailer for his house. It, Cause I'm really curious to see if you're tickled by that thing. I'll watch the movie in general, but we should talk about the haunting cause it's got Owen Wilson in it and it's got <laughs> Owen Wilson. Oh, it's got oh. Owen Wilson, uh, Liam Neeson. What's her name from, that movie uh uh she was uh oceans 11 2 oceans 11 2 that's 112 <laughs> that's too many and uh lily taylor i'm fine with whatever like i said you're in charge but we're gonna watch the conjuring conjuring so, okay, yes that'll be next week next week so come back for that again podcast at zero points oh whatever i hate this just fine i'm done bye bye <laughs> podcast at book club for movies.com <laughs>